Hello everyone and welcome to the Qigong self-healing DVD series. I'm Dr. Ginger Southall and this is Si Kung Lo who has been practicing the ancient Chinese art of self-healing called Qigong for 54 years. Uh, what does the title Si Kung mean? Si Kung means grandfather. It also is interpreted to mean teacher of teachers and also it is an address to an older or venerated person. It's not a name, it's just a title. What exactly is Qigong? Qigong is an ancient Chinese art developed many, many thousands of years ago, primarily for improving health, overall total health, and um, deals primarily with breathing. Uh, it's purely Chinese, and it has an age of about 10,000 years. Now, what is the difference between Lama's Qigong and other types of Qigong? Lama's Qigong is a completely uh, different from other forms of Qigong because it was kept in the esoteric fashion uh, before the Han period, that's almost 3,000 years. And in 1990, <clears throat> it's a family tradition, and in 1990 I decided to teach it because I thought that other people would ha need and should have the opportunity to experience this healing art that I've been practicing myself for the last 54 years plus. I'm almost, I'm in my 64th year now. So it's more than 54 years that I've been practicing. I started practicing Lama Qigong when I was six years of age. Now what would be a personal experience with Qigong? A personal experience where a person's own individual health is visibly improved and other people can bear witness and testify to the fact that this person's health has improved dynamically, regardless of what the complaint was but the person must be able to practice on a daily basis. Now, how would Lama's Qigong contribute to the elimination of stress? Your copy of the video, the stress elimination format, is called Shi Qi Qigong. When you practice this, you develop a calm, serene, placid, external and internal uh, state. You cultivate Yang Qi, what Yang Qi does for the person, it suppresses the cerebral cortex, the excitation parameters of your brain, making you calm, relaxed, and at peace. Stress is the origin and the genesis of all disease. It could be twisting an arm, you get stress, you have a car impact, you get stress, bad news, you know, dist a distressing environment, working in a bad uh, climate, you know, people you live with. These all cause stress. When you practice Shi Qi Qigong, apart from cultivating your Yang Qi, and Shi Qi Qigong can be sometimes referred to as Lion's Tail Qigong, it prevents an effect that I coined a phrase, I call CWD, cellular wall disintegration, because stress attacks the cell walls and this causes disease. Cellular wall disintegration could lead into a state of myfluria, which brings very serious complaints. So if you practice this very easy, enjoyable art, you prevent stressful conditions. You remain in control of your immediate environment. You portray an external appearance of being calm. How long would someone have to practice Qigong to be self-sufficient? Uh, the practice of Qigong is not how long you practice is how regular a person should practice qigong on a daily basis every single day and for say five to ten minutes is the minimum one should aim for about half an hour it's soft graceful gentle movements uh, it's non-repetitive it's enjoyable and it's not again I repeat not how long you practice how often now does qigong involve movement of some type no, Qigong involves movement within the body. Your breath massages the viscera of your organs and also repair any damage to the fascia. However, the practice of Qigong is to cultivate your qi, your life force. The movement that you may see, this is called Daoyan. These movements are stylized. They guide this developed cultivated qi. It, the movements of Daoyan guides and leads this qi, this life force, with its healing properties to your particular organs or system that you best need help with. In other words, you cultivate the energetic process and then you lead or guide it with intent to the vicinity, locality or area that you need help with. 
How would one recognize a good instructor? Uh, a good instructor should be articulate and communicative in your own personal language. In other words, their language skills should be such a way that if you ask a question, you would get a prompt answer. They should also be able to have access to a higher level. In other words, a more senior instructor or a master, and in rare cases, a grandmaster. This is so that the person who's learning this art has the ability via their instructor to get additional information that others are not privy to. Now, apart from the health benefits of Qigong, what other benefits could one find by practicing Lama's Qigong? Lama's Qigong, apart from its dynamic uh, input, increases the person's spirituality because when your mental health and your physical health is in a state of balance, when you're calm, serene, placid, when you feel less low in spirits, naturally your spirits rises up. This is a form of elevation of your spirituality. So Lama Qigong has an added facet that is non-religious, but increases the person's spirit. So they look dynamic, they look healthy, they look vibrant, and they're a person that you want to be in company with because they vibrate in an energetic process that others feel most happy with. Now, are there any racial, political, or religious bias agenda with Qigong? No, Qigong is basically to do with breathing. You can't have politics, religion, or race in breathing. Everyone has to breathe. What it does, for the individual who practices, it increases your spirituality. Whether you're an agnostic or an atheist, when one says spirituality, one means your spirit, not a religious uh, dogma. Your, your vigor, your energy, your vitality, your spirit, your life force. If a person is practicing another art or discipline, would practicing Qigong have any adverse effects? If you practice Qigong with other arts, it's not a problem because Qigong is non-invasive, it's non-repetitive, it's not injurious, it's not vigorous, it's calm, graceful, smooth. So I can see no problem practicing any other art if you practice Qigong because Qigong complements and enhances physical, mental, and spiritual growth. Would practicing two different types of Qigong pose a problem? Yes, it would do. You would have confusion. You go to one instructor, you get his or her version, and then you go to another instructor, you get another version of another type of Qigong. When a person practices Qigong, it's for their health, so they should stick with the type they're practicing. If the improvement does not manifest, if one does not see visible dynamic improvements after a short period of time, if you're not happy or comfortable with the instructor, the instruction, or the increased benefits, then switch to another one. All Qigong is good. They're all good. But, you know, you have to decide which one for you is going to improve your health fastest. What is the main thrust in encouraging someone to practice Qigong on a daily basis? Improved health mainly, also longevity, uh, increased vitality, which we're all seeking, and most important of all, to be able to look and feel well, to look younger, to retain your youth, to have all your faculties working as you get older. As I repeat, I'm in my 6th to 4th year, I've been practicing Qigong for a long time, but even if I started at 6 to 4, I'd never leave this art because it keeps you vibrant on all levels. Thank you, Grandmaster Lo, for this informative session on Qigong. We hope the information we presented here today answers most of your questions about Qigong, and we know you'll enjoy the video.